So nine months ago, I picked up the base model M2 MacBook Air and I loved it. And if you love something very much, a lot can happen in nine months. Let's ramble. Hold up, place go up when I pull up. They all on me like at once. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, when the M2 MacBook Air was announced in June of last year, I immediately picked one up to review for the channel and I decided to order the base model because that tends to be the model most people are interested in and I wanted to see what it was capable of. The other reason I wanted to review the base model specifically is that soon after the launch, some of the larger channels started dropping videos about how terrible the base model was and that you shouldn't buy it and I thought those reviews were incredibly unfair and this is what I had to say about it nine months ago. Oh my god, the machine slows down when you run multiple streams of 8K. No shit, people need to relax. Nine months later, I said what I said and I stand by it. Now, we will get back to the performance issue a little later on in the video, but first let's have a look at how this thing actually held up over time. So the design, in my opinion, is still stunning. I went for the midnight color because let's be honest, it is the best color. Yes, it smudges, it smudges very, very badly. And if you have any kind of ambition to keep this thing pristine, you're gonna have to carry around a microfiber cloth wherever you go. But hey, at least that finally gives me a reason to show off my swanky Apple microfiber cloth that came with my studio display. Remember the hype when these came out? Ridiculous. Anyway, it doesn't only smudge, it also scratches and it chips pretty easily. And that does seem to be particularly true for the midnight color. Or maybe it just shows better on this color, I'm not sure. With that said, this one has hardly any scratches on it, but to be fair, I kind of baby it. I make sure I always use some kind of bag or sleeve when I bring it with me, and I found the perfect one to keep it safe. This zippered sleeve by Harbor London has a really soft and thick lining, so there's no way you're gonna scratch the MacBook. It's super light and the exterior is made of recycled bottles, so you don't need to panic about a bit of rain or maybe a spilled drink. I love how thin the MacBook Air is, and every time I grab it, even after nine months, I can't believe how light this feels. My workhorse is a 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro, and even though that's a pretty compact machine as well, this one feels like half a laptop compared to that. The downside of that is that it takes zero effort to yank this one off the table. And to be honest, the rubber feet on the bottom do absolutely nothing to prevent that. That's why I'm happy that the Air comes with the new MagSafe charging port. And I would definitely advise you to use that if there's any chance at all of tripping over your wire. With that said, I'm glad it also charges via USB-C and that will give you fast charging as well. I'm super happy that Apple kept the full row of function keys, but it does mean that there are no speaker grills on the chassis and you can definitely tell. The speakers are decent for a laptop, but they pale in comparison to the speakers on the MacBook Pro. The Liquid Retina display is nice, but again, it doesn't come close to the Liquid Retina XDR display on the MacBook Pro lineup. The Air's display has only 60 Hz refresh rate, which is definitely noticeable, and it tops out at 500 nits, which is fine for indoor use, but not so great in bright sunlight. Speaking of displays, if you're used to running a dual monitor setup, you're out of luck with the M2 MacBook Air. Of course, there are third-party workarounds, but out of the box, this MacBook supports a single external display only. For me personally, that's totally fine. While my M1 MacBook Pro is docked and hooked up to an external display 99% of the time, I use the M2 MacBook Air as an actual laptop most of the time. My ideal use case is to grab it, stick it in a bag, and take it with me on trips and commutes. And when I get back to the office, I hook it up to a hub and a monitor. I recently got this thing here sent to me for review, and this is what I call a base station. I wanna keep my desk setups as minimal as possible, and the Prisma 3-in-1 does exactly that. It functions as a multi-purpose shelving unit so I can keep all the stuff that I need often, like pens, memory cards, my wallet, you name it. I love that it has a lid so I don't need to look at all the knickknacks cluttering up my desk. Right next to it is a charging station for my iPhone, delivering 15 watts of power, giving it a nice and quick charge. But the coolest part for tech nerds like you and me is when you press this button here. 
An entire functional hub extends out of the base station, giving you all sorts of ports, including an SD card, which is of course great for creatives, and an HDMI port. So this thing literally functions as the hub between my MacBook Air and this huge 48 inch OLED display, which I will talk more about in a future video. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, that'd be much appreciated. To top it all off, you can take the hub part off of this thing, toss it in the back alongside the MacBook Air, and use it as a hub wherever you go. Very cool product, I'll put a link in the description, and let me know if you want me to review it for you in a bit more detail. So after nine months, how good is the base model? Well, the short answer is that for basic users, it's absolutely fine. The battery life is outstanding. At normal usage, meaning not rendering video files all day, I easily get 10 to 14 hours out of this thing, which is simply fantastic. You can't complain about that. Earlier in the video, I said that there was a real trend across YouTube tech channels of bashing the base model M2 MacBook Air. But all that hate is based on unrealistic scenarios where people would get the base model and then throw the most insane tasks at it that even a MacBook Pro would struggle with. That's simply not realistic. With that said, the base model does have a bottleneck that can slow down the machine when it's under heavy load. The reason for that is that the base model comes with only eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of storage. And that storage is based on a single NAND chip. Now, if you try hard enough, even as a regular user, you can use up the eight gigabytes of RAM by keeping open a lot of Chrome tabs, for example, and a bunch of apps running in the background at the same time. Once the MacBook does use all the RAM, it will use the SSD memory for swap purposes. And because the SSD is slower, since it only has the one NAND chip, the entire process will be slower. There's also no fans in this machine. And while that's very pleasant most of the time because it's super quiet, it can cause thermal limitations when the machine is under stress. Now, should you upgrade the SSD or the RAM from the base model if you do need to run more demanding tasks? The answer to that is almost always RAM. While upgrading the SSD from the base configuration will help with memory swap, you'll still have only eight gigabytes of unified memory. It's better to double the RAM, so there's little to no need for swapping in the first place. I did a separate video dedicated to answering just that question, so if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Do not upgrade the GPU cores. Those are useful for long and heavy loads like video editing and 3D work. And that's just not what this M2 Air is good at. It's not what it was built to do. If this is what you need, get the M1 Pro or the M2 Pro if that's in your budget. It has way more cores, it has two fans, so the performance will be much better. And the price difference with the M1 MacBook Pro after upgrading the M2 MacBook Air is really not that big these days. But again, if you're a regular user, you shouldn't even be worried about these things. And the base model will serve you just fine. And when I'm using the M2 MacBook Pro myself, I know its limitations, so I use it for normal computer things. I use it to browse the web, I love sitting on the couch with this thing on my lap, and I use it for all kinds of office work. I handle my emails, I take care of my accounts, I do client work for my other business, there's no video work or anything like that involved. 99% of what I send my clients in that business will be in the form of PDFs, and here I would like to give a huge shout out to UPDF, which is the best free PDF editing tool out there, and it is definitely my PDF app of choice. And thank you so much to them for sponsoring this part of the video. Apart from the fact that it is a super solid product, you can also use it across platforms on Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android with just one license. Of course, you can read and annotate PDFs, but it does much more than that. It has a really powerful editor on board, which to me personally, that is the most important feature. I've tried a lot of editors over the years, and usually it's the editing part where it gets messy and things move when you don't want them to. UPDF is super clean. You just hover over the text you wanna change and everything stays exactly where it belongs. Of course, it also lets you fill out forms, which is another killer feature, no matter what business you're in. It has a super easy interface, just a few clean toolbars, and what you see is what you get. It's really easy to organize pages as well if you need to change the order. And when you're done with the document, you can either save it back as a PDF or export it to pretty much any file type you want, including Microsoft Word. You can install it for free and get the basic functions or get a plan, which is still a lot cheaper than most other PDF editors. Plus, there's a link in the description with a substantial discount. I believe it's like 50% off, so definitely check that out. So guys, 
What I've been trying to tell you is that this M2 MacBook Air has been an absolute joy to use, and I think you will love it too, as long as we're being honest about what this is and don't have unrealistic expectations of it. This machine is absolutely lovely. It's light, it looks great, the battery life is superb, it's super quiet, it runs the latest version of Mac OS, and it does so very snappy. It's not gonna be a powerhouse, and if you need a machine to run your business and you're worried it won't be able to handle your tasks, get a MacBook Pro. There is a reason why that one is called the Pro and this one is called the Air. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does make a difference. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.